It's that time, y'all. Nick Cannon Radio, and we are going all the way up because it's up close and personal conversations with people that I admire, that I look up to, that are doing big things, and this man is all of the above and so much more. In the presence of a king, a superstar, the one and only Nicky Jam. What's good, my hey, guy? man, thank you for those words, man. I, I, I think the same about you, man. Oh, man, that, that means a lot, man. From <laughs> one king to another. You know, kings recognize kings. Big fan, man. Uh, But first of all, congratulations, because we're here to talk about bad boys. Bad boys for life, man. Oh, I haven't God. got a chance to see it yet, but obviously I'm a huge fan of the franchise. As I know you are, too, to be a part of this film, to work with greats like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Tell me about that. I mean, you know, I saw the movie 20 years ago, the first one it's in crazy Puerto that Rico. It's been 20 years, 20 right? 20-something years ago, and uh, I was like 12 years old, and for me to like, you know, be a part of the third one is unreal. I yeah. can't believe it, you know, and uh, yeah. I know, I, I remember uh, I remember seeing the second one and, and saying, man, what are they going to do now? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. This, the second one was and nice, And the second too. one was fire. Yeah, it was fire, too. So, yeah. you know, third one, you was waiting for that third one, because when it's comedy and action, it's kind of hard to, you know, yeah. keep it good, you know? Yeah. But, um... Uh, I did the World Cup song with uh, Will Smith in in Russia. I saw that, y'all. Yeah. That was lit. We did a we did that uh, World Cup song and uh, you turned Will up. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of hard I, to I do. I said the only I said the only way I would do it if Will was Will was there because we already we already had a relationship. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, he 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 was happy to be in it, and he told me, you know what, we doing this movie, and I said I wanted to be a part of it. He didn't know I was uh, acting and all that. And he's yeah. like, if you could, if you do the casting and you pass it, bro, you win it. You know what oh, I'm saying? That's so dope. I did the whole casting thing, and I, so I you got went through the, the whole process. They I didn't just through, offer it to uh -uh. you. You had the audition and I, everything. Nah, man, I had to stand in front of two ladies, and, yeah. and you know, it's kind of it gets kind of awkward. You and know? you're a bad guy, right there. I'm a bad guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And normally I'm just a cool guy, but yeah. you know, I was raised in the hood, so yeah. bad guys is something. We saw since we were little, so it was not too hard to get yeah, yeah, back. Figured guys. it out, yeah. And I saw, I mean, the scene I did see, it seemed like it was pretty funny as well. Like, you gotta, well, they were funny, but you you guys got to do a little, yeah. little comedy and all yeah, that. Yeah, we did a, I mean, you know, we we did a little bit of everything, but I'm just like the second villain of the movie, and yeah. uh, I'm that guy that got all the connects in Miami, yeah. And uh, we, me and and and, and coach Burnett, me and Burnett, uh, Martin Lawrence, we have a history in the yeah. movie because okay. he was my coach back in high school, oh. you know what I'm saying? So I was, I was already bad in school. And uh, he knew about me when when they when when they were studying about my character and all that. Ah. So um, it was inc it's incredible. I mean, there was a, there was a part where we were sitting down in, in in the car for five hours, and I was like, I can't believe I'm sitting down next to Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Yeah. And they were look they they've been in the game for so long. They were just quiet, and mm -hmm. I looked like a 14 year old kid that could like, shut up. I was talking both of them, you know, driving them crazy. But they loved me. They gave me love, you know, and. Um, it was cool. I hope you guys enjoy it, man. Yeah, man, man. Well, congrats on that. I mean, and obviously, man, music has been your thing uh, for so long. I mean, mm -hmm. shoot, you, you, I think what, you, your first project, you was a teenager, right? I did my first album when I was 12 years old. 12? 12. 12 years old. My first album, uh, there was a record label called MP Records. Uh, I used to uh, do my uh, grocery. I used to pack groceries yeah. in, in in Puerto Rico, and I used to freestyle with everything I was uh, I was uh, packing. So I'd be like, you know, chips with the da 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 da. Yeah. And and, they, and, and they, I became like a little celebrity there. Everybody was going, yo, go to the aisle twelve. You're gonna see this little kid rhyming with everything he's packing. That's fire. So. Um, this lady came in with her husband and they're like, we want to sign you because there's no kid for 12 years old that could rap Spanish and English. Yeah. And we, we want we want that for the record label. And uh, I went with them in the car and and, and, and they went to my Wait, father's house. Wait, you just went to, just jumped in their just car? jumped in the car. Yeah, they could have took you anywhere. They could have taken <laughs> me anywhere, but they took me to a contract. Ah, <laughs> they, that's love. They went to my dad. Uh, they it was like the same day they took the contract to my dad. My dad looked at it like it's too much. You got you got ADD like me. Yeah. So he's like he's like uh, you know you want me to sign this? Yeah. Like, yeah, sign it. So he signed it, and uh, it was my first album. I mean, you know what are you gonna do when you're 12 years old, man? You got creative wise, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My lyrics wasn't the best, but the DJs from the streets like my style, yeah. so they started uh, calling me for their uh, mixtapes. And back in the days in Puerto Rico, the way they would work is uh, they would do these uh, long ass mixtapes where you gonna see like thirty cats uh, yeah. on the same beat. It on was like a yeah. it was a rhythm thing type of thing. Yeah, Daddy they, they, Yankee yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I was so about Daddy to say the rhythm. Yeah, the rhythm. So everybody was on the track, and I became one of the biggest artists doing that. Oh, dope. And that's how I became uh, so famous in Puerto Rico. And I did a whole bunch of albums, and then then I my downfall. I went into drugs, alcohol, lost right. everything. I was in jail for three years. 
And because uh, I came from a really dark background, my mom was a drug addict and 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 and, al- and alcoholic too. My dad was too. So you know, it was like a lot to take. All that fame when I was 20 years old made me, you know, not take it well. And uh, I did a lot of crazy stuff. So I went out of jail, and and after that, I went to Colombia, and. Uh, well, they called me for a show in Colombia when I was in my worst moment. And then you end up li- living there, right? I end up living in Colombia, and I and I saw how uh, the people love my music, and I, I just needed that country so they could give me that that hype me up. And Medellin, Medellin, and yeah. I fell in love with the country. And they, yeah. and I said, what if I do a song? There's 65 million people in this country. What if I do a hit song, a national hit song? I'll probably get a lot of views in YouTube and jump around other countries. Yeah. That's the way exactly what it worked. I folk, I did six number one songs in Colombia, and from there I went to the world, man. Yeah, and I was going to say, like, uh, you're probably one of the artists that kind of ushered in that new uh, digital exactly uh, fan base. Exactly. And a lot of people don't know that, especially in, in, in some of the Latin countries, that mm-hmm. their only source of music a lot of times to get new music is YouTube and a lot of the digital platforms because the radio isn't as broad as what we do here. Yeah. So, like, they discover a lot of music. Like, it's so so interesting because we're just now getting up on streaming and discovering stuff. But that the Latino me, community that, has been doing we, that in we've music been doing from it. the beginning. That made, that made me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. that made me sit down with the record label and already say what you guys gonna give me that I don't that already I already got. have because I got my platform yeah. and I'm touring and I'm doing everything so that that makes you really uh, be ready to negotiate with the record labels you know what I'm saying so this this is something I say to all these young kids around like you do your you gotta do your engagement yeah. with the people you gotta do have your YouTube channel and have everything and then you sit down with the record label and you make them be the monster backing you up yeah. but not own you yeah, you know what I'm saying. Fact. So you, so you get you grow big in your in your business. You're definitely one of the 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 front runners and one of the people that I've seen do it the best. One of the art best artists to to kind of handle their social media engagement and turn it into a business and operate it as your own platform. Like you you engage with your fans, you you make content, but then at the same time you still you you're not one of those people where they look like oh I only know him for this. Like you've been able to 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 straddle every platform very well like is that by design do you have a team or is that because it sounds like i said because you were one of the first you kind of had to just stumble on it and figure out oh yeah we gotta we gotta keep this rocking i mean i I started you know like uh seeing uh that people love organic things and people love that you could be you like the instagram specifically is like uh, something that you could show who you really are yeah you know what i'm saying sometimes people are like yo how's nick cannon like yeah how is he like what's his vibe you know what i'm saying they only know what they saw on tv but no instagram you had 15 seconds in that time to do a video and talk yeah. to people yeah. so i said if i do this i'm gonna make people fall in love with me know me who i really am and connect with me and have that engagement and uh my manager obviously so it was the route to go. And, uh, yeah, I do have a team. I do have a incredible manager. And I could say that uh, my manager is probably 50% of us or 60% of my success. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Because he does dope. really smart moves and he knows the business. He learned the business with me from, right. from the bottom. You know, he, this guy was selling socks in, oh, in wow. Colombia. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? He was selling socks and he was just hustling and working in banks and repo and all kinds of all kinds of yeah. normal jobs that, you know, normal jobs, you yeah. know. But uh, he, he started learning about the whole business and now he's one of the best managers in the Spanish market. You That's know what dope. I'm saying? Because he understands the, the business and the combination of us together, you know. And I just, I just, I just try to be, you know, organic with my people and just show them love and all that. That's that's dope, man, and much continued success, man. I I I love your journey. I love how how you grind. And one thing I love the fact that even you talked about it a little bit is like your love for the craft and for for hip hop and knowing like yeah. it's just like even your freestyle. You know, like a lot of people don't understand that like you really do this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're not just another one of those guys. Like even in your studio process and all of that. When when making a Nicki Jam record or even putting something together, how how serious or how uh, important is it for you to to kind of tap into that craft of you know being an artist and and showing your skill set? I mean everything because I came from the '90s where yeah, you yeah. really had to be an MC. You yeah, really yeah. had to rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it was just you with a DJ. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Facts. So I came from that time. You know what I'm saying. So for me, it's really important to you know 
do everything. I didn't even know I could sing until yeah. years later. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. I was just rapping. I was yeah. a rapper. And I started out, I'm from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah. You know, it was a small city in, in Massachusetts yeah. where uh, rap wasn't even, you don't even know rappers from Lawrence. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And I was just rapping and doing my thing. I got to Puerto Rico when I was 10 years old and I didn't know no Spanish at all. Oh, wow. And I, and, and no Spanish at all. And now I don't know too much English. <laughs> <laughs> my English is, you know, yeah, you know yeah. because I, I lived in a Spanish world for so long. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, for me, it's really important to be a good rapper, a good singer, yeah. you know, do do everything. And that's that's what I like about you. And Man, I, I respect I about that. you. You rap, you a comedian, you an actor. Yeah. You know, and I respect that. And when they told me I was doing something with you, and I, I was like, well, that's a guy I look up to. You know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, man, likewise, man. Like I said, I've been watching. We, You know, we connect on many levels before. So, like I said, I'm a fan. I, I appreciate the hustle. I appreciate the success. And I want you to just keep going, keep shining. That's but, what's up, man. you know, all accolades and, and Compliments aside, I got my bulletproof vest on, Nikki. I see that. That means that uh, I, I got to put you in the firing squad. We shooting straight from the hip. <laughs> questions, however you want to answer them, rapid fire. They're psychological questions. They're real questions. There's no wrong answer. We start off uh, with the uh, a Nico Machiavelli uh, philosophy, love and hate. Uh, they say there's only two emotions, really, and every other emotion stems from that. Loved, or not love and hate, loved and feared. Which one would you rather be, loved or feared? Loved. Love, really? Yeah. You know, because, I mean, fear, there that's where respect and reverence and a lot of that comes from. I mean, I come from, uh, I see it in a way that my, 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 my grandfather, nobody feared him. Mm. And he helped a lot of people in his neighborhood. And he died 20 years ago until this day, they, they still talk about him. Mm. So I don't think you need to be feared to be... Uh, Think Powerful. of, I think respect comes with love. So yeah. that's my, my way of seeing it. Love right there. Now, speaking of fears, what's Nikki Jam's greatest fear? My greatest fear? My greatest fear is, uh, I could say it's not, you know, leaving my legacy the way I want to leave it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and not being, and, 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 and not, not, probably not, not being able to see my grandkids, mm. stuff like that. Yeah, it's always family that makes family, you like family really and, tap into that and, fear and space. Yeah. Today I'm gonna be real with you. Tomorrow, if I go with God, I, I I'm a happy guy because I I've, I've done, done it all. some amazing things. I've done it all, so I'm I'm a happy guy. But, but you still want to see your I grandkids? I want more, and I want to see my grandkids. Understood. Yeah. We lighten it up real quick. Favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time. I gotta go with Scarface. Yeah. I gotta go with Scarface. I could watch that at any point. From any like like any time of the day, I gotta just, go with Scarface. I yeah. know the whole movie, you know? front to back. On there's something like me, you know. <laughs> so you could punch your fucking face. Yeah. Say, the bad say guy. good night to the bad guy. <laughs> good night to this bad guy. <laughs> That's fire. <laughs> no, right I like there. the movie because uh, uh, first of all, Scar uh, Al Pacino is amazing. Fire. I mean, everything he does. He, he, he Especially does. then too, though he was yeah, in his yeah, bag. Yeah. He was in his bag. Yeah. And um, the movie. The movie makes you wanna hustle and, and wish for anyway. filming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't even gotta be in the He was the way. super underdog. You know, exactly. You know, so like, you took Frank's girl, you're coming with me now. You're coming with me. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> I feel like that, but in the music, in yeah. a nice way. I, yeah. I, 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 I stole this girl, this white girl, the other yeah. day <laughs> <laughs> You silly, yo. That's hilarious. All right, best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, Best advice I ever seen. Well, you know, my dad told me, you are what you do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, whatever you do is going to reflect on what's going to happen to you. So just do good. Yeah. And treat yeah. people with respect and it's coming your way. Yeah, it so is. It's not necessarily going to happen always, but mostly. So It's the way the universe yeah, works. My dad, my, dad be, my dad got those punchlines. Yeah, Ain't no yeah. rapper got more punchlines than my yeah, dad. Yeah, pops. That's, that's dad yeah. those real good punchlines. Worst piece of advice you've ever received? Um, don't go to Columbia. Mm, they were trying to scare lose, you from gonna, going there. You're going to lose your You're gonna lose your career. You're going to be a clown. And that's where it happened for and you. And that's where it happened for me. Ma, wow, that's love. All right, all right. Favorite cuss word? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> most important uh, tattoo? Or the one that tattoo? means the most to you? Uh, my mom, I, I got her here on my, says, yeah, I'm on my mind. It's a, it's a picture of my mom, you know? Oh, that's dope. I'll show it to the camera because it doesn't yeah. make any sense me talking about <laughs> it if I don't show it. Yeah. 
It's my my mom's face. Oh, right that's there. beautiful, it man. It says family, and, and it says I love you, mom. That's my mom face right now. See, I, she kind of ashy right now. But I'm, <laughs> gonna I'm gonna hook her up. I'm gonna hook her up. That's a, put some lotion on, mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom's kind of ashy right now, but I'm gonna hook her up. That's all right. Uh, fan moment. Have you ever had a fan out moment? Obviously, you talked about your Will Smith and Martin moment, but like the moment, is there anybody that you ever met that almost you had like that fanboy? Like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm with this person. Oh, Denzel Washington. I was, I was in uh, Paramount uh, Studios, yeah. and I was working on because I did the movie Triple X with Vin Diesel, and uh, I I need I needed to do some voice voiceovers. Yeah. That's yeah, how you say, yeah. yeah. And uh, Denzel was coming out, and uh, he he kind of felt my accent, my <laughs> New York accent. Yeah. He was like, Cause I'm from I'm from I'm from Lawrence, Massachusetts, yeah, but, but I lived in New York yeah, uh, yeah. for a couple of years, so I still got that. Yeah, the Puerto that Rican, York, that Puerto Rican, yeah, yeah. New York, New Yorkian vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he's like. What you know about New York? He just said like that, yeah. and, and I'm like, "What you know about New York?" <laughs> and 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 I said, "I said uh, I'm from Creston 193 by Fordham Road. That's where I live." Yeah. And he was like, "I study in in, in Fordham High School. Fordham High School." Yeah. And um, like really, he's like, he looked at me and he said, "You want to get this picture?" Like he uh -huh. asked, he told me want to get. He knew I wanted it, yeah, yeah, but he was like, "Want to get this picture?" Like hell yeah, let's get the picture. And I got the picture. Y'all could Google it, check it out. It's and still he, out there. Yeah, you and Denzel, me and Denzel, Denzel with a New York hat and a T-shirt. I mean, how long ago was this? That's this, a this was like uh, probably like two or three years ago. Okay, when I, when the triple probably like three years ago. Yeah, that's fine. Oh my god, man! I mean, I re, I repost it every year. Yeah, <laughs> as you should. I every year, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because Denzel is is the best, and that's that's why I want I, I want to work with Denzel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do you, hey, well, you just did Martin and Will, so yeah, Denzel I, I, should be I did, next. I did, I did Vin Diesel. I did Martin and Will. It's big, but but I want to work with Denzel too, man. Denzel is that's fire. Else. All right, now you're on the island. You're stranded. You only can take three things. What are the three items you taking? Damn, you killing me, man. Because <laughs> today, <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever it is, you like, however long you want to be on the island, you could be. Deserted or you could be on vacation. Either way. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take my girl because I don't be bored. There it is. Take my girl. Yeah. Um. Take a whole bunch of Coca Colas. No, there I it can't is. Say that. Yeah. Hey, if that's <laughs> that's what you want. <laughs> um. And uh. Huh? I don't know, man. Just just take all my family, man. Just see my family. There just, it man. is. I, mean, I, I could sounds I could, like a family we, reunion we, we, we on we the island. Tree. We could eat trees. And yeah. Stuff. Like, live off the island. Yeah. That's fire right there. You caught me on guard with that one, man. Most prized possession. <laughs> that I have? Yeah. My voice. Ah, uh, smart. My voice. Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. Food, man. Yeah, there oh it is. Oh, my God. Worst job you ever had? Worst job I ever had. Um... I can't say that. I would probably disrespect people. That well, okay, <laughs> first job. Let's go first job. First, because well, you said you worked in the supermarket when you was. I 12. worked in the supermarket, but that was a good job. That got yeah. me a contract. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> but like one of them jobs, like man, I can't. I, I'm an artist. I can't be here. With yes, you. yes. Uh, well, you know, there's uh, these things that you have to put for the for cameras when they have a when they when there's a project of, and they're gonna put cameras all over it. Yeah, like security. I, I was setting the. The whole system for, for oh cameras. word so I had to go up high places and all that I hated it possibly job. falling and oh all that shit God. I mean I was getting like, up early getting up early in the morning you know taking shit from a boss yeah you know, like, I, I wanted to be a boss I'm like I'm not I don't I don't work for this yeah. I like Foot Locker though I work in Foot oh, Locker word? yeah I was that, good with that yeah hustle, man. that's a hustle man I'm good with that hustle, the commission man. Man, you gonna buy you gonna get these new Jordans yeah the girl ain't got the new Jordans. oh you guys come like, on come on man you know how it is man you know yeah the that, that's real that's real all right um trying to think what's it what's another one oh okay this this is a good one you only can have one album that you can listen to for the rest of your life what is that album JC, uh, the which one? I'm gonna tell you the name right now. Cause I was, I was trying. What's my favorite whole album? Probably Blueprint. Probably no the reason, Black Reasonable Album. Reason, oh, the first one. The first one. Oh, that's the one right. That that's one right strong. There. I can. I, I'm good with that one. All right, so hey, while we here, might as well go. Nicki Jam's top five. And it don't have to be greatest. It could be just the ones that influence you. Uh, top five. I gotta say, Jay Z, Fifty Cent. Ooh, all right. Drake. I rock with that. Dre. 
Drake. Drake or Drake? Drake. Drake. Okay. Yeah, Drake. All right. Um, Kanye. All right. One more. That's this is this is a strong top five. Eminem. Wow. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I'm rocking with that. That's that's a heavy. That's some that's some numbers right there. Those are the ones. I Those like are probably them. all the highest selling that we that we can actually do. I love the fact that you put Drake in there too. So we got to say this. I mean, though. Drake been hot for ten years. Consistent. Consistent and they for ten years. I mean, I don't know, man. But and and then have battled and 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 come out of the battle like, I mean, like a you beast know, and not being a street dude and still yeah. you know what I'm saying killing everybody. I think Drake is I, he's, he's melody I, wise. Yeah, rapping. I feel like my top five shifts quite a bit. He's he's been in there consistently. Yeah, Quite a bit. It could change. I mean, I, I mean, the thing, yeah. is, the thing is, the top five is not enough. Sometimes, you yeah, know? yeah, we need more because there's a whole bunch of rappers that I like and I, I respect a lot. Indeed, indeed. And speaking of uh, respect, we always in the firing squad this way. You've done so many things, had such an incredible journey, and and it's continuing to go in that direction. But when it's all said and done, one word that describes Nicki Jam. One word. Love, man. Mm, there it is. Oh, love. Love right there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an up close and personal conversation with the man of love. Yeah, man. I Nikki love you. Jam. I love you all. I love Nick Cannon. <laughs> and man. I love you. You're a beast, man.